So I'm sure you all heard the news. And no, I'm not talking about the speakership. I'm talking about what's going on over at the UN there in New York. Have you all been seeing that? No, because it's not on the news. And what's going down? Well, I'm going to tell you here in a minute. We also have Israel. Guess what they're not going to be doing? Ah, we're going to talk about that too. And finally, oh, the whole Middle East is nothing but a tinderbox, and we all know that. And what does that mean for you and me? And how is that going to impact us as a whole? Basically, the whole world, but us as a whole here in the United States. And then finally, yes, we did get a speaker, didn't we? Took them damn long enough, but hey, they made it, finally. You know, our good old government just, uh, you know, dragging their feet again. What was it, 20, 22 days? And we've got all this stuff that's all got to get done now within the next couple of weeks before all the deadlines come again. And more than likely, we'll probably be kicking the can down the road once again. So hold on, folks. We're going to get started in this video right now. So... What is actually going on? Well, as I did state, you know, as of now, we do have a speaker. And we have a speaker in the chair. Yeah, a, a, real, a real person. He's in the chair. It's not a pro temp. There's somebody actually in the chair. They actually all came together and voted this guy in. Nobody voted against him. And boom, he's in there now. Let's see how long this lasts because he still falls under what got McCarthy in trouble in the first place. And one person can basically go, you know what? You didn't bring me my flowers today. I don't like you and toss you out. And we're right back in the same boat again. Who, when Kevin McCarthy made that stupid rule or agreed to it, it was like you're putting your own nail in your own coffin. Hello? Especially in this day and age, you know, there's just too many, you know, whiners out there and they just don't want to, you know. Anyways, it's all water underneath the bridge now. We got a new speaker. Let's see how long he lasts and see how he does. I don't really know too much about the guy. He's from Louisiana. Uh, listen to him speak. Seemed like a pretty good guy. We'll see what happens. All right. We'll give the guy a fair shot and see how it goes. You know, I'm sure maybe... Uh, some of the Democrats probably won't like him and we'll have to see how this all plays out and if they can work together to get anything done because that seems to be the main problem here is nobody wants to work together. Everybody wants everything they want and it just doesn't work that way. Welcome to the United States government. Uh, chaos is its middle name. So... Moving on down, and speaking of chaos, at the UN, which is taking place right now. I mean, it's uh, 4.17 in the afternoon, and it's been taking place for the, like the last 20, 30 minutes, and I listened in to the vote, um, the resolution that the United States and several different countries put together, and they put that up for a vote, and guess who shot it down? You got it, Russia and China. Gee, wonder why. Let's see here. You got China that's in Russia's back pocket. And with the Middle East being such a big, huge tinderbox and Iran keeps, you know, pushing these little buttons and telling, you know, all these different groups and stuff. Hey, you know, we, we're, we're behind you and everything else. So, you know, the U.S. is looking at everybody over there and, you know, China needs that oil. Hmm. And uh, yeah. And Russia, well, they need the support that they've been getting underneath the table that has been reported on uh, where they've been getting the drones and all this kind of stuff from the Middle East over there. Uh, nobody's really throwing their hand up and saying where it's coming from. We know where it's being made, but somehow or another, it's just ending up in Russia's hands. Now, we can't figure that out. But yet, they can track you on your phone and tell you exactly where you are and what you're doing and who you called, who you text, what you said, and everything else. If not, just ask Alexa. She knows. My point being, they all know where all this stuff is going, where it's coming from, who made it, and the whole nine yards. Okay? But China and Russia voted down, so it did not pass. Now, the re resolution 
was to bring in more aid and stuff and to back the Israel uh, Gaza war type deal with restrictions on basically doing a humanity basically doing uh, let me get spit that out you know basically it's all about the humanitarian aid and everything else and they want a like a ceasefire or a pause for a certain amount of time to get the food water fuel and medicine and everything else that they need in there to help take care of the innocent people and the people in the hospitals so they shot that down because they want their own resolutions to be put in and everything else. And they were both saying, you know, oh, well, we're for a ceasefire. And we were, we're, we're both for, you know, the humanitarian aid and everything else, you know. And China was, you know, you just don't know how to read them. But what they were stating and what they were saying, it sounded to me like, you know what, um, if it's not our way, we're more worried about what the United States is trying to do in the Middle East and trying to take control and all that because they know if something really goes south with the amount of firepower that we already have in the area, more men are being shipped over there into Iraq and Syria. Hmm. You know, they're worried about Iran. And they're worried about, because I don't really think we're going to go bomb cities or anything like that. We're going to hit their infrastructure. It's going to be the oil lines. Plain and simple. They're going to hit them where it hurts. So, the reason to be a prepper is coming up. Now you have Israel. And now Israel is stating they do not care what resolution is passed. They do not care any longer what um, any country is really wanting, including the United States, they are all gung-ho on defending their country. And by what good old Netanyahu said there, uh, that's going to be taking place. The ground evasion is coming, um, as he put it, hours, not days. So we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. You have a moment of opportunity. Yeah, yeah, can't speak today. You have a moment of opportunity to make sure that you know that you are prepped and you are ready. You have to make sure that you're doing what you can because let me tell you what. If Israel does go against everybody, including the United States, on a basic ceasefire or just a pause in the war that they declared against Gaza... If they go against all that and they go in, I can guarantee you that every Palestinian group that is over there in all the different areas, Syria, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, um, Turkey, Iran, everywhere, they're all going to be outraged. And it's going to end in World War III. Because everybody's going to start going after Israel. Now, we have a stake in this game with Israel. Because the Israel has quite a few nuclear weapons that are stationed throughout the country of Israel. And we've made sure of that over the years. Because it's kind of where it's located. You can reach out and touch somebody without having... The big dog missiles, if you get what I'm saying. The little puppy dog ones will do just fine and do quite a bit of damage. But they can reach out and touch anybody in the region that they want to reach. Just the way it goes. So, you know, we've already set them up with their Iron Dome system that's been working quite well. You know, out of all the rockets and stuff that have been fired over there, yes, there has been a few that have got through. But you're talking thousands and thousands of rockets. And if you get a handful that come through, well, by God, that's a pretty damn good system. In my opinion, considering it's being fired less than probably 20 or 30 miles from its destination point. You know, it's being fired from Gaza City and it's landing within 20 or 30 miles. And that only gives you when these rockets are traveling as fast as they can. Um, it only gives you a matter of maybe seconds to maybe a minute if you're lucky i mean to counteract that and shoot it down think about it 
That's pretty wild. That's pretty intense. But we put it there. That's our system. Ah, it's a pretty good system. So, here's the thing, folks. Everything is a powder keg right now. Everything is in chaos. And if you're not prepping, you're not going to be surviving. Here's why. There's too much chaos involved. Until we can get the chaos and calm people down and get people back together, this whole thing is going to be one heck of a mess. And if Israel goes into Gaza before more than likely the United States or the UN gives them the approval, look out, folks. Because everybody else is going to be coming in from the north when Gaza's going in from the north, headed south. Mark my words. And it's going to cause prices here to escalate, climb, go through the roof, fuel oil. Oh, yeah, we're enjoying cheap fuel right now. A lot of areas. I mean, around here, I've seen it like two ninety nine, two ninety six. Hey, we'll take it. But don't take it for too long. Fill those gas cans up you got sitting in your garage that are empty. Do it now. I would. Can't hurt. Buy yourself a thing of uh, stable. Pour that in there. And it'll last for six, eight months, if not longer. Dump it in your car when you need it. There you go. Maybe your generator. Whatever it may be. Food prices are going up. They've been going up. We go into a war of any kind, food prices are going to go even higher. And who's to say, depending on how big this thing is, that they don't start rationing how much food you can buy to make sure there's plenty to go around, if you get what I'm saying. Stock up now, because your family depends on it. Till next time, folks. You all stay safe. You keep prepping. Now's your time. Get it done.